Hello everyone, welcome to JSKX and my name is Deepak. In the last video, we have seen how to generate a push notification and how to actually make use of SW push service from Angular framework. In this tutorial, we are going to be setting up um we're going to be setting up Firebase for our UI. At the same time, we are also going to be seeing how the notification appears at the head at the top of the window. So let me just quickly generate a sample push notification from the dev tools of Chrome browser. So if you click, you can see that the notification has appeared over here going or probably let me just write down something else. So let's say, hello, Deepak. Let's say push and there you go. It says hello, Deepak this time around, right? So you can just close them and then do your thing, right? So this is all about uh, push notification. And now we are going to be basically starting up the new thing, which is setting up the Angular Firebase. And in order to do so, let me just quickly open the Angular documentation and I'll take you to. So here uh, you can click on Angular Fire. And then the moment you click on it, it, it opens up another window in which the settings and then what, what is really required to add the Angular Firebase is, is listed right over here. Right? So you will have to basically follow this documentation in order to add the Firebase support to your Angular application. All right. So there is another thing that I want to bring your attention to, which is essentially uh, this particular thing. So here, uh, if you are using MacBook, so here in the MacBook, you will have to basically, okay, let me just open from the day point one. You click here and the Apple icon right at the top and then open system settings. In order to receive the notification, you must ensure that you have the notification set up properly, right? So how do you ensure that the notifications are set up properly? So you understand that all these three has to be checked. And then if you scroll down towards this page further, you would figure out that there are two uh, things, two, two uh, Chrome icon. First is allow notification for Google Chrome. This has to be checked. And if you go back and then look at this one, this also has to be checked. So once all these three things are checked, meaning two Google Chrome for notification over here, and then if you go further on the top, all these three has to be checked in order to receive the notification. If you don't, this is specifically for the Mac users. So please go to the uh, system settings and try to test, try to see if your notifications are, all these notification buttons are checked or not, right? So this is this pretty much it about, um, you know, the, the notification, how you can really receive the notification, right? All right, so now we are gonna be adding Firebase support to our Angular application. And in order to do so, uh, let me quickly take you to my VS code. And here in the VS code, you can see that my application is already running on port number 8080, right? And then the other terminal, which I have kept it open is over here. Um, and then let me just clear this, do a PWD to see that where exactly it is. So let me just come out from the browser folder, right? Clear this bit again. And now let me take you to the Chrome. Here in the Chrome, you can see that uh, I've also kept an angular.dev web page open over here. And here you can see that in order to have the Angular Firebase support, we need to click over here. It's going to be an external link. And the moment I click on it, um, it, it opens up another page. And then the first thing it tells us to do is to basically add the Angular Fire support by using the ng add command. So just copy this bit over here. Go to the VS code once again and run this command. It's going to be asking a few permissions uh, while it installs the Angular Fire support. So let's just wait for a moment. And it says that Angular 1701, Angular Fire 1701 is needs to be installed. Let me put Y for this, which is yes. It takes a moment and it starts installing and downloading assets which are required to run the Firebase in your Angular application. So just hold on for a moment. All right. So now you can see that it asked me what exactly do I wish to do with the Angular Firebase support. So let me just expand this a little bit more so that you can see it clearly. In order to navigate to different options, you basically have to use the, the arrow button. And in order to select the option, uh, you need to press the space button, space bar rather. So see, you can see that I, as I press the space bar, the option is selecting or deselecting on, on its own. So let me just quickly come here. All I'm going to be doing is basically using the cloud messaging because it's a PW and I really wish to receive messages from the Firebase FCM. So let me select this, press enter, 
and then it again takes a moment and in a moment it will install all the required repo all the all the required packages in the background if i'm really logging with with my firebase so um before we run into this option you, i really want to make a request that in case if you do not have a firebase account i would re highly recommend you to go and create one for yourself and i really have the firebase account available and that's why it asked for the option and then uh, all you really need to do is basically log into the firebase and then uh, you know run a command whenever your firebase is installed as firebase login and after the moment you run it it asks for um the the uh auth token and everything else like there's a pretty step step by step command available right here at the command prompt and you just need to press enter and keep selecting those options and then you will be good to go right you would be logged in into the firebase and then you'll be able to use their services so now i'm going to be selecting my account which is basically on on this name deepak jhavan for dot ex the of gmail.com so you're going to be pressing the enter and then all uh, right it, it basically lists all the application that i have on my firebase console okay so before i explain this let me quickly take you to the chrome and then let me open my firebase console so console and there you go so here you can see that i already have an application available which is with the name js gigs um pwa i'll just take you to my firebase and there you can see right it is js gigs pwa is already available over here let me uh, take you back to the VS Code. And here on the VS Code, you can notice that uh, since I already have uh, the, the JS gigs hyphen PW, and that's why it has shown an option. And it's not the app that, that, which I wish to use. I'm going to be creating another application. So I need to select this option. And then now it asks for the application name that I'm going to be keeping uh, for, for this particular purpose. So it's going to be dent students details pwa and then press enter Hello project now it's going to be creating this particular project in my firebase uh, console as i had already logged in to my firebase console using the email id given over here which is deeperjob14.ex at the rate of gmail.com in your case it's your gonna your id gonna be your, your id going to be representing or or will be shown here if you have logged into your firebase using your email id right in my case since it is mine so that's why it is it's like that so uh, now i'm going to be creating an app um and then again i'm going to be keeping same name so which is students details rather let me keep it students details and then press enter now it's going to be creating an application in a moment and once it finishes creating the application in the cloud uh, we would go to uh, basically the uh, console and then we'll, we'll see we will cross verify if the application has been created or not so if you closely notice over here it says that it has updated dot git ignore and also it has updated app.config.ts so now let me quickly take you to app.config.ts precisely the change that it has made so um, i hope the code is visible to you so let me just minimize this a little bit more so in order to have the support for firebase the moment you add it then it's going to be basically uh, making certain changes in the app config and then all of all over here the, the the things things that are changed are basically basically the configuration of my application is kept here at the line number 13 and i'm not going to be showing it it's sort of be um you know it can be so here the firebase um, it has also created a firebase.json file and it has created it has made a change in the console which is basically this so these are the thing which are going to be uh, avoided while you update it and then it as you can see that it has also uh, written an entry to debug.log meaning the debug.log was also getting created the moment you start using the firebase at the root directory of your application right so in package json you can see that angular fire 1701 has been installed right so the, as you can see that 1701 is the only thing which is installed over here and package log log json as you have installed the new dependencies obviously certain things would have changed and that's what exactly listed here the package dot package hyphen log dot json so now uh, we have created this now let me quickly take you back to the google chrome and then refresh this page and see if the new application that i've created is being listed over here or not so there you go 
So now you can see that um, you know there is another project which is created, which is the, the one which I've selected is uh, basically students details PWA, and that's exactly what we have really done. Now I look at the cloud messaging because we have since we have chosen the cloud messaging, and that is why the cloud message um option was available in case had you chosen different varieties i'm pretty sure all of those would have been listed here um in your in your things like grow and engage in the audience since i have if, if you notice that in the selection i've made cloud messaging selection only and that's why only this is being shown in case if you had shown if you had selected hosting and other things all those things would be listed over here right so now we are good until this point page is available here and then right, you can just click over here and then go to the project setting and set the project setting now you can see that the application name and everything else is uh you know available here so this is the nickname app nickname as we had given the second time the first one is uh the, the first option that we had given was as student, students details pw which is listed over here and it tells all the project id and project number and everything else listed here right so this is the configuration file this is the configuration file which is being um, listed at the app dot config dot ts now quickly let me take you back to vs code here in the vs code you can see that the app config ts file so app config ts file the details which are listed over here are the details that are given in our web in our firebase console so let me expand this a little bit so let me go here and click on it now you can see that these are the two methods that it has downloaded and then as you can see the line number 13 was changed import provider from and all of these details are listed here so as you can see all these storage project id students details pw is similar to what we had seen in our um, firebase console right so that's how we basically set up uh, the firebase console um for any application and then it's fairly simple in, in angular uh, but if you were to do it basically outside angular that's also can be done but then i'm right i'm going to be showing the angular way and then we will try to do separately so thanks everyone uh thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for listening this uh, small video tutorial in which we have set up uh, the firebase console for our application in the next video tutorial i'm going to be talking about adding a backend support and we'll try to see how push notification really work in in case of angular application and that's what exactly which would be displayed over here right so for now i'm just going to be wrapping this up here and i'll see you in the next video tutorial wherein i would display push notification from the server we'll we'll try to create a small push uh, node.js utility to send a push notification and we'll see what vap id and other things are there other things which are very important for your push notification to work thank you once again ladies and gentlemen uh, for listening into this video tutorial and in case if you're liking my work don't forget to subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon in case if i create a new video you would be notified if you click on the bell icon it's an absolute pleasure to host these video tutorial for you ladies and gentlemen and i'm going to be seeing you in the next one thank you